at the ESE 2011 hotline, Salim Youssef reported the very disturbing results of a large survey conducted on 154,000 patients of secondary prevention in high, middle and low-income countries. In 628 urban and rural communities, they measured the delivery of the most proven drugs for secondary prevention, such as aspirin, statins, beta blockers and ACE inhibitors. What we found was some very terrible news, and the terrible news was that the majority of people are not getting these treatments. This gap in effective treatment was there in the rich countries, but much more marked in the middle-income and the low-income countries, and it was even more marked in rural areas compared to urban areas, indicating that access to these drugs is a major issue or access to health care. These findings highlighted clear room for improvement, which the health delivery system planners might need to consider. The gap is largely because we don't have a proper system of, del of making sure patients get these conditions. The second is these are so simple that it is better to have non-physicians involved and the third, we need to put it all into a single pill to make it easy for patients. The impact of postprandial triglycerides on cardiovascular risk has been unclear, and the Homburg Cream and Sugar Study, presented during ESC 2011 hotlines, throws new light on this clinical issue. Glycemic and triglyceride metabolic tests were accessed in 514 patients with stable coronary artery disease. They were evaluated after 18 months for cardiovascular deaths and hospitalizations relating to glycemic and triglyceride profiles. Overall, if you look at the total population, triglycerides do not help you in addition to the traditional risk factors. But if you have a patient with normal glucose tolerance and he has fasting triglycerides above 150 milligrams per deciliter, his risk is threefold higher compared to one who has low triglycerides. Now we identify this subgroup of patients who may have a triglyceride-associated risk and it will set the stage to maybe test whether these individuals would benefit from a triglyceride-lowering strategy. As many as 50% of dyslipidemic patients could be inadequately treated in Europe. To help physicians improve management of dyslipidemias, the European Society of Cardiology and the European Society of Atherosclerosis jointly developed specific guidelines in 2011. The main target is not anymore uh, total cholesterol, but uh, LDL cholesterol. We uh, introduced uh, uh, four steps of risk, I would say, which are taking into consideration HDL cholesterol. So we don't have any more only uh, high-risk patients, but we also have moderate-risk patients, for instance, which are in real life a majority, and of course they have to be addressed properly. And another important issue in this uh, guidelines is combined therapy. When we have patients which do have uh, decreased LDL cholesterol but still have a low HDL and increased triglycerides, again combination therapy has to be used since they also contribute significantly to cardiovascular risk. <laughs> 